following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good afternoon, folks. Welcome to the June 10th, the fantastic Friday edition of today's Trader's Zed Show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Hey, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. And the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. Well, go figure out what those bulls and bears, primarily the bears, but what they're communicating to you and I at just past one o'clock in the afternoon. I do want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But more important than that, and that's this. During this next 60 minutes, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. You can dial on it at 877-927-6648. Now, if you can't dial in, we've got you covered there, too. You can let those fingers do the walking. You can send me an email. Send it to Steve at tfnn.com. And inside the subject heading, please put radio show question. Of course, in our Tigers. Then, well, any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Fantastic Friday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to Lush Show. Right now, I got all the USNCs trading the downside. The Dow's off 822 points, about 2.5%. S&P 112 points, 2 and 8 tenths. NASDAQ 103.4% or 418 points. Russell down 57, 3%. Semis off 3%. That's 92 points. You've got the spot politics, which has a one day rate of change right now, just above 10%. So you want to watch that at day's end. Gold's up 24 bucks, 1876 as the uh, print. It's got uh, trading right into resistance, top of its daily profile. Silver's up 10 cents at 21.92. Lights Recruit is back a buck 21. She's trading at 120.31. Natural gas up 18 cents. That's down 2%. And the 30 year treasury trading out 135.10. That's off a uh, one and a quarter percent. You've got uh, lead the charge dollar wise, the upside, individual stock wise. CVR Partners, UAN, up 6 bucks or 5%. Franco Nevada, up 5 bucks or 3%. Tuttle Capital uh, is up 7%. Uh, Cogent Biosense is up, Biosense up 83%, so they've cured something. To the downside, it is uh, leading the charge. Well, that's out of order. That's interesting. Uh, point losers. Uh, Mercado Libre, nonetheless, is off 56.7%. Booking Holdings, 167%. Google's off 72. Regenerate Pharmaceuticals, down 6. DocuSign, down 21. That's a 24% move to the downside. So we've got plenty to look at, of course. I want to look at what you want to look at out there. So let's begin. Let's begin by doing this. Let's just rip apart the equity futures out here. Why do we want to rip apart? Well, right now, if you take a look at these charts here, you've got the ES on the left. You've got the NQ next to it, then the Dow, and then the Russell 2000. So what do we know? We know that price is sitting at a support level inside the ES Mini. That support level or range is between 38.85 and 39.71, the bottom of the weekly and daily profiles. The NQ, its last bastion of support is the bottom of the weekly profile. Now that's at 11.861, we're trading at 11.855. Still, nonetheless, we're at a support level. Inside the Dow, we're at a support level, the bottom of its daily profile, and that's at the 31. 31,435 area, and if price closes below that, then you would, then it would signal move down to 31,067, the bottom of its weekly. Now, in the case of the Russell 2000, which did generate a sell the D point pattern, stronger than the others, it hasn't gotten anywhere near the top of its uh, swing point from back on May the 20th. Was it? I don't know if it was there. It was yeah, May well May 12th for it. It was May 20th, I believe, for the other instruments out there. Uh, and prices right now just trading in between trend line support and trend line resistance. So the whole purpose of looking at this is trying to establish, is there any kind of support that we see? And if so, then that helps us to try to interpret and understand what we see on the intraday charts. So now let's begin by taking a look at the ES Mini. So we know that all four are sitting at uh, potential support areas. 
And if that's the case, and, uh, and there's going to be some type of turn, then we'll start to see those on the intraday time periods. So we begin by taking a look at the ES Mini. The shortest time period that we take a look at here is a five minutes. So I'm just going to explode these screens out so that we can see all the detail. We can see here that there's TD9 count, Rhodes Mint Indicator bottoms, wave number seven bottoms, all down here. And basically, we're in a sideways consolidation. Price would have to close above 39.25. Just suggest to move up to its TD9 count breakdown area, and that's on a five-minute chart out here. But certainly the five-minute chart is establishing that it's attempting to form a bottom, not that it has formed a bottom. If we look at the 10-minute chart out here, 10-minute chart for the ES Mini shows us what? Well, it doesn't show us um, too much at this stage. It shows a Rhodes Mint uh, let's, well, let me let's look again here. Yeah, it shows a Rhodes Mintum indicator signal, but this needs a bullish reversal candle. But what the 10-minute chart is really communicating to you Forget about the bottom. Take a look. If I were to ask you on any on any attempted rally, should we get one? Where's resistance? Pretty simple. It's at 39.18.75 out there. That's the top of that profile. So that's a level to put down on your pad of paper. Should you get some type of um, rally attempt, the 15-minute chart has a Rhodes Mintum indicator signal uh, that had uh, formed with a hammer candle. So the cool thing here, so far of the three intraday charts. This one provides us with the most amount of information. What I mean by, well, not the most amount, of, the most amount of bottoming information. What I mean by that is if you were to see a close below 38.9850 on a 15-minute basis, that tells us we're headed lower out there. It's the 10-minute chart that gives us a nice intraday resistance levels. So you've got those established to manage the rest of the uh, trading day out there. On a 30-minute basis, it has triggered a Rhodes Mintum indicator signal. This is the first bar I believe that it could trigger it on. That needs a bullish reversal candle. So we're sitting at support. We take a look at daily and weekly profiles. Intraday charts suggest that there's bottoms that are attempting to form inside the ES Mini, but nothing will have any kind of real uh, conviction to it unless we see a close above 39, we'll call it 39.19. Now, the 60-minute chart, I don't see any kind of bottoming pattern, nor do I in the 120. Uh, the uh, five-hour chart is saying, man, I don't know what you guys are talking about as a bottom. I want to get down and test the swing point low for May the 20th inside the ES Mini. That low out there is 3,807.50. And as long, price, as, long as price closes below 39,49.50, that's the top of that profile, that will really be its message. So let's summarize the ES Mini out here. Intraday, there are signals where there's a bottom attempt. If it's going to take hold and it's going to mean anything, you're going to need to see a close above 39.18 out there. The longer-term charts, the five-hour and the daily charts, are suggesting that price still wants to continue to move lower. However, that lower in the ES Mini could just simply be down to 38.85. Now let's go take a look at the NQ out here. Let's get those charts up on our screen. Uh, this will take just a, a moment here to uh, populate and... Uh, Let's see here. Okay, good, good. All right, so when we take a look at the NQ, the NQ is well below the top of its May 20th swing point. That suggests it might want to get down to the bottom of that level. The bottom of that level is out at the 11,491 area. Let's go, let's go back and do this in reverse order again. Let's start with the five-minute chart here for the NQ. See what kind of signals do we have. you got nice roads to indicator signals, so certainly attempting to form a bottom. Uh, resistance out here, I'd say the real resistance level that I'd be looking at is 11... 921. If price could close above that, then you'd be looking at 12064. Right now, if price closes below the low, that's at 11824.25. That tells us that we're headed to lower ground out here. And that's back to that May 20th swing point low. Steve Roach with TFN. We'll be right back. of booming inflation, where your purchasing power is eroded, there's no better place to protect your hard-earned money than in gold. Vista Gold's flagship asset is the Mount Todd Gold Project in the Northern Territory of Australia. This is Australia's largest undeveloped gold project. We are talking a world-class gold project in a Tier 1 mining district. This is a large-scale, low-cost project with significant existing infrastructure in a politically safe and friendly mining jurisdiction. Vista Gold just completed the Mount Todd Feasibility Study, which resulted in a 7 million ounce gold reserve and a 16 year mine life. All of this combined with the approvals of all major operational as well as environmental permits. This distinguishes Mount Todd as an attractive, de-risk partner, ready development stage gold project. 
Vista Gold trades on the New York Stock Exchange under the symbol VGZ. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Now, toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Internationally at 727 873 7618. Welcome back, uh, folks. We've got a question inside the Tiger's Den to go take a look at Goldilocks. So, those are the charts that we've got up on our screen out here. And the question is, and I assume it's on a daily time frame which is to uh, take a look at a potential Gartley buy pattern. So Gartley pattern or buy the D point pattern, really you've got to have an A to B equals CD. So here's the daily time frame chart here. So the A to B point, the A point's going to start with the high on March 8th. That's going to move all the way down to a low that forms on March 29th. I don't have the C to D drawn in here, but that uh, B to C leg, that C leg ends on the trading day of April 18th. So that high then begins that C point. Now, I've just used the exact one-to-one -one extension, the exact same angle of A to B as we've got here, C to D. So that tells us we've got to look at this stage here for a bullish reversal candle. So, Coder, in my line of work, and I really suspect, I really suggest that everybody do the same thing here, the purpose of Japanese candlesticks is to confirm patterns. Candlesticks in the middle of a move are just interesting, but candlesticks at the end of a move that's where you really get the payoff here. And so on an A to B equals CD pattern, the way that it gets confirmed is with a bullish reversal candle. If you just bought or sold every one-to-one -one A to B equals CD, I can guarantee you. This is, I can't guarantee much. But one thing I can guarantee is you would have your arse handed to you. Don't do that. Wait for the market to communicate. The market's responsibility and role is to communicate to us. And the way that it will communicate that a pattern is complete on an A to B equals C to the downside, it'll generate a bullish reversal candle. Now, in this case here on the daily, we might have the same pattern on a weekly. So we can take a look at the weekly chart out there. If we get a nice confirmed bullish reversal candle on it, then okay, but we don't. If you take a look at the weekly chart, we do not have that. Now today happens to be a bullish engulfing candle. So here's your confirmation. Today is your confirmation, not before today. There's not been a bullish reversal candle before today of this A to B equals CD. But at the same time now, and the cool thing here is, if gold is going to prove itself to us, what does it need to do? It's pretty simple. It must close above the top of its daily profile. That's where we, that's what it's done. It's, it's really run today. It's run the gamut. And the gamut has been, it's made its way down to the bottom of the profile in the 11, 1824 level, and it's made its way up to the top of the profile, and that's at the 1879 level. So what you really want to see here is a close above 1879 in really two consecutive days to then say, 
that today's Gartley buy pattern or buy the D point pattern is going to go ahead and take hold out there. And if it does take hold, where's price going to head to? Well, the first price target would be the oscillator and change line. And that is at the 1893 level. And if price can close above that because it's green, then that would tell us about a move up to the 1959 level. So we're going to take this one step at a time. From an intraday standpoint, the interesting thing here on a five-hour time frame chart is when gold topped, it topped with a TD nine count top. So, but it did it at, uh, let me get my cross here, it did it at 2,300 hours on June the 2nd. So, the cool thing about this pattern is that if price can close above this level, it does not have to close above it today. But if it does close above 1878.60, that's going to tell us about a move higher. That, quite frankly, could set up an A to B, would set up an A to B equals CD to the upside. But your next resistance level would be in the 1919 area. That's based upon a five-hour time frame chart out there. So nice action today in gold, nice reversal. But quite frankly, all that it really was doing was testing support, which has now led to a test of resistance. But, but, uh, but it's positive out here. And as I look to the intraday signals, I don't have an intraday signal other than getting back to prior resistance out there. So I hope that helps you out. Uh, now, not, to, not to, to finish off gold here, remember the most important thing in a rally for gold, or quite frankly for any instrument, but most certainly for gold, is what? That it's moving higher in every major currency pair. So now let's go take a look at those. Thought I said on that tab. Here we go. So on the left-hand side, you've got gold priced in dollars. You can see descending trend lines on each of these things. Next to that is gold in euros. So nice movement today. Gold in dollars. Nice movement to the upside priced in euros. Nice movement to the upside priced in yen. In fact, in yen, it's almost back to a new all-time high out there. And nice movement today priced in pounds. So what I would say is, even though we're trading up to resistance, what we have, at least, at least is a signal that gold is really rallying in all these currencies. And therefore, a close above that 1879 level is really what you're looking for, as well as a continued move higher for gold in all the major currencies. If you get that, then what you have is, in fact, a nice rally out there. So I hope that helps you out with regard to the question about the A to B equals CD to the uh, downside. Let's go to our next question. Next question coming in from uh, Jared. Jared L. writes in. Ah, uh, geez, what the heck happened? I hate this new iPhone stuff uh, email. Mm. Okay, Jared writes in. Steve, I was looking into a long-term position that may be more stable. Stay, I don't know, more stable than what. And this one actually pays a good debit. QYLD. So let's go. By, I'm not familiar with that ETF out there. I assume that's an ETF. Um, maybe that's a bad assumption. But uh, let's go take a look at what Q, Q, what is it? Q, QYLD is communicating to us. We'll use our multi time frame charts out here. Give me a moment. We'll change screens. Otherwise, Mr. Bill's going to bop me upside the head, say, hey, you're talking about one thing and showing something else. So here's the QYLD chart. You're looking at taking a long term position. Well, the monthly chart, we don't like that necessarily. I don't see any kind of bottoming signal here. Let me open this up, see if there's anything else. Because we go back on the left-hand side, yeah. So I don't like this. I think it looks like the monthly chart says you might be able to get into this position at a lower price. The weekly time frame chart says what? So the weekly time frame chart shows a hammer candle and a confirmed Rhodes momentum indicator bottom. Now that formed out here the week that ended May 13th. We have not seen a close below that hammer candle, so support has held. But if you were to get a close below 1762, that would then signal lower price. Now, there's a new profile in place out here, and price might find support at it. That's at 1768. So the daily, weekly, the weekly has a confirmed bottom. The monthly says, I'm not so sure about that. What's the daily time frame chart tell us? Daily time frame tells us what? Tells us that this formed a... TD nine count top, but did it yesterday, the bar following bar number nine. So, Jared, here's what you want to do. This should pull back to approximately the 1764, 1768, 1747 level. That would be your potential buy zone out there. So what you'll want to do is you'll want to navigate, I suppose, volume on any kind of a, a pullback into that area. And on this ticker symbol, the volume at the swing point low, which was May 24th, that had 7.4 million shares. So ideally, it will get back into that area. When I say that area, the top is at 1756. And if it's doing it with less than 7.3 million shares, rejects that, then maybe you have a, a buy point into that. I'd just be concerned about the... Um, 
I would just be concerned about the monthly time frame chart. The other thing that I would certainly mention to you is Spencer, maybe you already have done this, I don't know, but I would go take a look at what the holdings are inside of this. Understand what the holdings are. Usually the top 10, oftentimes, not always, but oftentimes the top 10 holdings represent 50% uh, or thereabouts of the ETF. And so you only have to track really 10 instruments out there. But I would most definitely do that uh, with regard to uh, this instrument out here. Um, so I do hope that helps you out. Thanks so much for taking the time to write in. Next question coming in from uh, LB. And LB says, uh, hey, hope your day is going well. It is. Can you take a look at URA? So absolutely. So let's get this fired up here on these white screens. Uh, we're going to a break, so that's a perfect uh, that's a perfect opportunity to let these things populate. I'll leave that screen up on the chart for everybody inside the Tiger's Den, and uh, they'll be able to uh, tell me what the charts are telling LB. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my Gold Report. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFN. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, the Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of tfnn.com. Welcome back, folks. So we're taking a look at uranium out here. URA is the uh, ticker symbol. And uh, so what we see, all I really see is an A to B equals CD to the upside on the daily time frame uh, that we talked about, I think, the last time. The A point down here on May the 12th, we'll just draw this in, so to speak. So here's our A to B point, uh, that B point being the high from May 31st. Uh, and there was a one-day retracement out there. It was, it was close to a 0.382 retracement, so I'm comfortable with that. That, that low is still intact out here. This is what the A to B equals CD looks like. Jeez, I want to take hold. Grab it. There we go. 
Here we go. So here's here's the A to B equals CD pattern. As long as the low, the low from June 1st holds, which is 2132, that's the pattern that's in play. Now, what price has done here today, it's pulled back to support. That's the bottom of its bullish structure daily profile, and that's at the 21... 2161 level. So that's what I see when I take a look at uranium on the daily time frame out here. Um, no no reason to jettison your position, at least not yet, especially while that A to B equals CD pattern is in play. Um, on a weekly basis, uh, price this week ran into resistance at the oscillator and change line. But at this stage here, that doesn't look like a big deal out there. So I hope that helps you out with regard to uranium. Uh, let's go to our next question out here. The next question, uh, where'd that uh, go to? was inside the uh, Tiger Zinnel to take a look at um, DocuSign, D-O-C-U. That's having basically a horrible day. So let's let these uh, charts here get populated. But the question is, is DocuSign, is it pulled back to some type of level of support? That's what we're going to go uh, look at out here. Whether it's, uh, well, I, I'm looking at my other screens and it has not pulled back to a profile level of support, whether that's daily, weekly, or monthly. It is trading into a swing point, so I'm actually going to switch green since it's easier for us to take a look at volume and what's going on at that swing point uh, than it is on the white background charts. So now let's go ahead and open up the daily time frame chart here for DocuSign. We can see the swing point. We'll just expand this out that it's trading into. We'll put a line across that just so everybody can see that. And that's the swing point. Well, we were going to try to put a line across it, and we are going to do that. See where it's trading. And that's trading down at the uh, swing low from May the 12th. Uh, that's at 64.84. There was 5.2 million shares. Now, Dan, price is pushed into it with 32 million shares. So in one sense, you got all that volume and it's holding, right? So it's a good sign, a potentially good sign. But because it's pushing in that swing point with volume, it should push back down into it. Now, I don't know if that means Monday or Tuesday or Wednesday or Thursday or Friday of next week, but because you're pushing into a swing point with volume and it hasn't cleared the swing point, it would need to at least close above to reject just the swing point, forget about the volume issue, close above 72.15. So this is suggesting that price will get back down to that level. Maybe it's a light volume test that uh, you could consider uh, uh, taking a, a trade and could consider it. Now, let's uh, look at the other time frame charts out here since we're on this black background chart. The weekly chart is pushing into that same swing point that had 29 million shares with 56. Um, let's look at the other, uh, the white background charts now, just looking to see if we can find any kind of uh, any kind of pattern out here. Change windows. Give me a second to get there, if you would be so kind. And on the monthly time frame, there's a TD9 count potential that would form between this month, June and July. Uh, the weekly chart now, uh, actually, it, uh, it did it before. So the weekly chart actually had confirmed a Roads Mintum Indicator bottom. And it did that the week of May 27th. That was one week above the top of the profile. The next week it got below it. So there was never really a breakout message. So um, what does this mean, jelly bean? Well, right now with this close on a weekly basis, if it closes below the low of that bullish engulfing candle, which will look like it will, that's at 69.78. That says that that Rose Mentum indicator pattern on the weekly basis had been negated. It's void. So you would need another, a new bullish reversal candle to confirm a bottom there. So it does bear watching out there um, on the weekly time frame chart. The monthly's got the potential for a TD9 count pattern that could complete in June. The daily also has that Rhodes Mentum indicator signal triggered. So um, that says if you got a bullish reversal candle, now you've got that gap to contend with, but if you had a bullish reversal candle, that would confirm a bottom. So I'm going to summarize like this you're pulling into a swing point that is held with volume price should get back down into that level i'd say sometime next week i might test that of course if it blows through that that says we had to lower price you would say lower price to where lower price to where would be 45.52 as one level that's the monthly td9 count breakout level how about that from 320 all the way back to its breakout level it hasn't gotten there yet but very likely could at the 45 52 level. So, Dan, I hope that helps you out. Thanks so much for the request. We also had a request inside the Tiger's Den to take a look at Rivian. R I V N is the uh, ticker symbol. Let's get those charts uh, fired up here. I'll look at those on my black background chart, see if there's anything that sticks out. Right now, I can share with you that Rivian is trading with inside its daily profile out there. That's between 2627 for support and 2844 as resistance. It is below the bottom of its weekly profile, something that formed two weeks ago. That's kind of a bearish signal it's not kind of it is a bearish signal so now let's uh come on finish uh finish uploading here don't know why it's taking so long but it is rivian monthly chart hasn't traded long enough 
to get any kind of uh, important information from it. So we will just simply pass on that. The weekly time frame chart says if there were to become a bullish reversal candle, that would confirm a Rhodes momentum indicator bottom. We don't have that. You can see the profile above price. Not a good thing. Um, if we look at the daily time frame on Rivian, what has it done? It has done a lot of damage. Um, wow. So certainly there's an A to B equals CD pattern on the downside that was confirmed on May the 12th out there. So the daily time frame says, you know, maybe there is something here. We're, we've got the we've got a couple um, series of lower highs couple series of lower highs, one series of higher highs out there. So there's potential. So what I would do is I would watch the support area on Rivian. And again, that's between 2627 to 2699. If price were to close below 2627, then, you know, you probably set up an A to B equals CD to the downside pattern. But that should be support. So I do hope that helps uh, the requester out with regard to RIBN. I think we've got another, I think I've taken care of everything inside the Tiger's Den. If I have not, that I've overlooked it, and if you'd be kind enough to retype a message either to me personally, if you could send me the private message, then I won't miss your request out there, and that would be much appreciated. We do have a request that is coming by email. It's from Yvonne. Yvonne says, uh, can we analyze Hood, H-O-O-D? So we'll definitely do that. That is an ETF. I just can't remember what it's for. And the question is, can we identify support and resistance points? And you also have a wonderful weekend, Yvonne. Thanks so much for writing in. So we're waiting for those charts to populate on our white background charts out here. W-O-O-D is uh, the ICRs Trust Global Timber and Forestry, ET Forestry ETF, and it's looking pretty darn bad out here. Uh, did it? Yeah, okay, it's working. So when, let me just switch over to the black background charts. We'll switch back to the white if it uh, reveals any important information. Right now, wood is pulling back and testing the bottom of its monthly profile out here. Now, monthly profile is priced at 81.42. Granted, we're only 10 days in, calendar days into the uh, month out there, but still not looking good. Um, you're below weekly profiles. Where is this headed to on a weekly basis? So you're below weekly. This could easily pull back into the uh, January 25th low. That's down at about 78.62. Uh, do we have any other kind of pattern out here worth noting? You know, it does have a consolidation. So on wood, you can also use the consolidation uh, measured move approach. And it would look like this. We're going to draw on that consolidation pattern. I think this is pretty solid. So now that it's below that consolidation, wood is like, I'm just, I'm not going to copy it. I'm just going to move it down. It looks like wood would likely be targeting to the downside about 71.14 out here. That's coming from the weekly time frame that we're looking at. The daily time frame shoot, it shows that we're below the bottom of its uh, profile yesterday and today. Uh, volume wise, uh, the swing point it's taking out. You're taking out with volume right now. So this sets up an A to B equals CD to the downside. That pattern looks like this as we draw it in. The B point being that low from May 12th. The 1 to 1 A to B equals CD gets us down to a price objective of 78. The 1 to 0.272 is 75.19. That's on ticker symbol W O O D. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. Data White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. 
His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. My apology there, folks. Uh, we were looking at uh, wood and hood, uh, both at the same time. The white screen had the uh, hood charts. The black background charts had the uh, wood charts. So it's hood, and it is Robin Hood markets out here. So Robin Hood right now is testing its swing point from May 13th. That swing point had 48 million shares. You're testing a much lighter volume out here. You're testing so far on 15 million shares. So 771 holds. That's a slight positive out here, but that's the only slight positive. I didn't see any kind of bottom signal on those white background charts. Uh, if you're looking to buy this, um, I don't think that's enough information, just just rejecting that swing point out here. So, um, you know, at, at this stage here, I'd look for some kind of sign of strength or something off of the bottom. And we don't have that. We have signs of weaknesses in this instrument out there. So uh, at this stage here, we're going to say we don't see anything inside of Robin Hood. Ticker symbol there is H double O D. My apologies for having really two sets of charts up at the uh, same time out there. Let's go to our uh, next request. Our next request. Um, so we got DocuSign. We got Rivian, I believe, was to take a look at uh, the euro. And I think there was some of oh, the 30 year treasury. So here if we take a look at the uh, euro out there. The euro's got a nice monthly TD Nike out bottom. Now, if that fails, then it's really bad news for the euro out here because there's nothing below the failure of this pattern other than getting back to the 2000 and uh, 2000 lows out here. So what I mean by that is there was a TD9 count bottom that formed. It was, a, it was last month. It was the, am I showing the right chart? Nope. Hold on. Sorry. Sorry, sorry, sorry. <clears throat> Okay, so now you've got the white background charts. We're all looking at the same thing. That's a beautiful thing. And you can see the TD9 count top that formed last month. It was a bar following bar number nine. So that low is really key. That low is 1.0349. That would, uh, if you got it close below that, well, you'd be below its breakout level. And that would say Geronimo to the downside. Now, if that happens, you know how today's market is pretty poor and pretty bad? And you know how basically most everything that everybody's been posting in the den is gloom and doom out there? There will be even more gloom and doom in the markets or what's on the news. But guess what? If the euro breaks through this level, if this TD9 count bottom fails, there is going to be a flood of capital from Europe into the U.S. and is going to push our U.S. markets higher. And you and I won't even need any technical analysis out there because we'll have fundamental analysis, which is a flow of global capital into the U.S. And we will take off screaming 
to the upside out there. So you do want to watch this monthly pattern here inside of the euro because if it fails on a monthly basis right now, that tells us we had lower and that the U.S. equity markets would really gain some traction out here. Now, on a weekly basis, you've also got a buy the D point pattern. Certainly there's A to B equals CD patterns that were confirmed with that bullish engulfing candle, but now price is back below red oscillator and change line. That says we have a falling price oscillator below zero for the weekly time frame. That is a bearish condition. It says we get back likely and test the low, or do we take them out? Well, if we're going to take them out, that signal is going to come because we have a TD9 count on a daily basis, and price is now below that red oscillator and change line. So price should be able to get back to 1.0428. If we get a close below that, that's really going to jeopardize the monthly time frame signal that you and I were looking for. So quite frankly, everything inside the euro right now is setting up for a huge. Did I say huge? Did I mean gigantic? I meant gigantic and huge. The combo of them, gigantic and huge, move in the U.S. equity markets. And you probably will not hear that too many other places out there. And all you have to do is just understand the global flow of capital, quite frankly, will trump everything. Trump everything. Now, on a closing basis right now, you have the euro that is penetrating its closing low from back in the uh, 2016 time frame. But the charts that we looked at in that pattern used the candlesticks, which is what we should do out there. But the, the euro is threatening. And again, there's no floor. There's nothing else below this level inside the euro to move higher. Look, if you want to understand, I know people will call it the dot-com bubble. I got that. But you had global capital flowing here, and it was going into everything. It was the global flow of capital that pushed the markets higher in 2000. It was the global flow of capital out of Europe that that did set off the roaring 20s. I'm not talking about the 2020s. I'm referring to the 1920s. And guess what? Our markets have been pushing higher, and the euro has been pushing lower since 2008. I know we like to believe out there that our markets moving higher were all based upon QE. Huey! I didn't say QE. I said Huey on that. That's not the case. Yeah, it contributed, but this contributes just as much out there or perhaps more. And, I, and the people that everybody says get so tied up into a quantitative easing, Yet most of those people that like to talk about quantitative easing have mortgages. And what's been happening to housing lately? What's been happening to mortgage? I'm not talking about the last couple of weeks out there. Has that market expanded? And what do people put down on a house? Where does the rest of that money come from? Let's just say the 95% of it out there. You want to talk about putting money into a marketplace and you think it's just the, uh, uh, the Fed that's doing it? And you don't want to even take into consideration what goes on with mortgages? Come on now. We have to be real. We have to step back and take a look at that stuff out there with regard. It's not as simple as one thing out there. So don't just blame everything on the Fed. And certainly don't believe that the Fed's going to control inflation out here. Not the type of inflation that we've got. It's just going to make matters worse. We've talked about that. Raising interest rates is just going to make it more costly for all businesses to do business and in a supply shortage market that doesn't sound like a great formula to stevie out there all right so uh, was, the question was to take a look at the euro i've done that i'm getting off my soapbox out there although that's a soapbox that i really believe in and maybe i've gotten one person to hear what i've said to then say hmm something to think about now let's try to take a look at the 30-year treasury i'll get that up on uh, we're in the september contract here we'll get that up on my white background screens but in the meantime Whoops, I've got to actually type in the correct symbol. So give me a second here, if you would. ZEB 9-22. So we'll get these things to populate, but we'll also go take a look at my other charts out there. We'll get to the four panel 30-year uh, treasury charts out here, get a feel for what they're communicating to us. Big picture. So we'll change the uh, screen. We'll go over to that. Oh, we're on the black background screen. Perfect. So here, as we take a look at the 30-year treasury, what do we know? Well, first of all, from a profile standpoint, price is trading below all profiles. When I say all, I'm referring to daily, weekly, monthly, and quarterly profiles. When you trade below support, that's what the bottom of the profile is, says you want to head lower. Head lower to where? Well, there's an A to B equals CD pattern is certainly in place when we take a look at the monthly time frame chart. And that says 131.22 would be the next likely move to the downside out there. Doesn't say that's where price ends. 
the 1 to 1.272 expansion, which is more likely where price would head to, would be 121.71 out there. And that makes all the sense in the world to me. The U.S. dollar index is moving higher, which it typically does before wars begin, as sovereign nations really start to move their portfolios around. And uh, so in, in the U.S. dollar index is the place, or the U.S. dollar, I should say, is where it is that is the safe haven out here. And if there's, uh, and everybody knows that there's issues in China, and if there's a potential of a war in China out here, and they're a holder of treasuries, who do you think is selling into the rallies? Exactly. So we've got a lot of risk exposure that's going on here that they're trying to uh, get rid of. And in this case here, longer term, bigger picture on the 30-year treasury, 131.22, 121.71 ish area is uh, where price is likely headed. Zero to TFNN. Right now. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text, either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free! Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back 
go, folks. So uh, we began the show taking a look at uh, how price uh, was sitting at support levels uh, for each of the four equity future contracts. So just to remind you of that, let's just move over to that screen out here. And the reason is because when you get to support levels, what you then do is go down to those intraday charts and look for some kind of signal. So the support levels in the ES mini again, it's the bottom of the weekly and bottom of the daily profile. So far, tests and rejected. In the NQ, it's the bottom of the weekly profile. So far, tests and rejected. In the Dow Equity Future Contract, it's the bottom of the daily profile. Tests and rejected. In the case of Russell 2000, it's not a profile level. It's a rising trend line. Uh, it's been traded between trend line support and trend line resistance out there. So now let's go over to, because uh, we only have about a minute with each other here before we uh, head out for the weekend. Let's go take a look at our 30-minute time frame charts. So to do that, uh, here we've got the ES Mini. And what we can see inside the ES Mini as we speak right now, Roach Mintum Indicator Signal, a new profile that has formed. That new profile is uh, very bullish in structure. What do you mean by that? Uh, what I mean by that is the bottom and the center are at the exact same price level, 39.11. So that is a real key level of support. If there's close below that, it says we head lower. But otherwise, you've got a Roach Mintum Indicator bottom. You've got a, a nice uh, profile that suggests that price should be able to make its way to 39.73. We'd have to go investigate other charts, other intraday time period signals to take a look at that. The NQ has got wave number seven established. So most certainly it could bottom. If we take a look at the Dow, when I say bottom, I'm not talking about rally from here. Counter trend move at this stage here. The Dow's got a Roach Mintum Indicator signal. If price can close above 31,600 on a 30 minute basis, then what we're talking is move to 31,935. And you've got a TD9 count bottom for the 30 minute chart for the Russell 2000. So you've got daily and weekly level, really daily levels on the NQ was weekly level of support that held. You've got some intraday signals suggesting that there's going to be some type of counter trend relief out there. Let's see if, in fact, this takes hold. But stay tuned, folks. You've got two more great hours left. Your favorite polar bear, David White's up next. Tom O'Brien will take us on home. Have a fantastic weekend. I'll see you on Marvelous Monday. Take care. <laughs>